Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe's Classic Video Games back with another cool arcade repair video. We are working on this really cool Sega Harley Davidson Motorcycles, Harley Davidson and LA Riders arcade game. And the thing, when we got it in, is in pretty rough shape. We already filmed one video on this, so if you missed that video, go watch it now. You don't want to start reading the book in the middle or anything, do you? But if you've been waiting for the next chapter, here it is. We've made it. So this thing, in the last video, we got the board up and running. And it seems to be doing its thing. It's going through a track mode. It looks like you can play it, but the sound doesn't work. Oh, look. That's exactly what it looks like. Such a cool game. Uh, but we're not quite there yet. It's not quite doing its thing. And the poor motorcycle is falling slap the hell apart. <laughs> right? It's also front heavy. So the whole thing is scary as hell. I mean, it'll stop like about like that. I mean, just look at this. Uh, you know, so, holy crap, giving me, just having it here in our showroom has been making me freak out. It's, it's not right. So the bottom of it, I believe has been wet. We're gonna have to reinforce the whole thing. I gotta get it nice and steady where this thing will not tip over no matter what you do, especially because it's so simple in a game like this because of the handlebars. So uh, the first thing we have to do is get the sound working and then we're gonna we're gonna work on the cabinet and try to make it look better and also be sturdy where it won't fall over. Um, so that's what this video will basically entail. This is a Model 3, Sega Model 3 um, uh, you know, hardware. Uh, which we went over in the first video and we also replaced the power supply so all of that good stuff so uh, let's get into why the sound isn't working uh, we'll, we'll test a few things and see if we can figure out what the culprit is so if you look in the back over here to the left is a speaker and it's got a gray wire and an orange wire running to it and then over here on this side is a speaker and it's got a gray wire and an orange wire running to it and then they run down and they connect right here on this connector so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to check the resistance between the orange wire and the gray wire and then the other orange wire and the other gray wire so you, you set your meter on ohms and basically what you're doing is you're checking the speakers to see if they're any good. So if they're like 8 ohm speakers, whenever you measure the resistance between the two wires that are connected to the two blades on the speakers, you should get near 8 ohms. It's not it's not a perfect way to check it, but it'll pretty much works. If you check it and it's and it's open where they're not connected, these two wires that are connected to the one speaker are not connected, then you know that there's a wire bo broke on the cone or the speaker is just bad. Um, so it could be that both of the speakers are bad because um, we didn't have the uh, seat plugged in and the seat has another speaker in it. Uh, but the only, the only two on this one, I believe, are those two up top. So if both of those are bad, you wouldn't get any sound. So I'm going to use a multimeter. And the reason I'm checking the plug instead of just the speaker is because if, if you check the plug and it's you can't get your 8 ohms reading, uh, on the two wires then it could be that's telling you that that's the problem so it could be the wires or it could be that the speaker but it, you're narrowing it down to f that it's from here on and my guess would be that it's probably these amps um, but we'll check and see if the uh, if this let me get my multimeter and I'll show you what we're talking about okay so I've got my multimeter set on ohms we're going to check the ohms between the uh, two wires going to the speakers if I can figure out which ones are the two wires going to the speakers. Hmm. Yeah, I'm getting nothing. Let's see, if I touch them together, I get, you know, down where I should. I am getting nothing. I could have two bad speakers. Wouldn't that be crazy? Unless I'm, unless I'm looking at the harness wrong. I don't believe I am. 
So I'm going to try the same thing on the back of the actual speaker up at the top. So I was very carefully able to finagle the entire bracket out of the machine with the monitor still in it out of the back. You got to be real careful though when you do that. But see how it says 8 ohm? So this is an 8 ohm speaker. So when I check that, I do not have 8 ohms of resistance between the two. Um, and it's not really resistance, I think it's impedance in, in something like that. But you can test it. Whoa. <laughs> You can test them like this. So uh, well, I'm not getting my 8 ohms like I should. Um, so what we're going to do is we'll temporarily rig up another speaker to the two wires and just lay it in there and see if we get any sound out of it. And if we do get any sound out of it, then we know that's the problem. I mean, I'm certain this is at least a problem because the speaker's bad. Um, so we need another 8 ohm speaker. Okay, so I've got just a car speaker that I can use to test it with. And as you can see, this is a 4 ohm speaker, and we're getting right at 4 ohms resistance, even though it's really impotence and you're not supposed to measure it that way, but at least it tells you that it's in the ballpark, right? Um, normally, if it was a different game, I would just mount this in there and that'd be the new speaker. But since this one it has this contraption where it sends the sound around the screen and since it mounts right near the tube that you know this is a magnet on the back of the speaker you run into this problem where if you put the wrong magnet in the wrong spot you end up with uh, you end up with it interfering with the the actual monitor so I don't know and it's the wrong impedance too so I don't know if I can use these or not I might be able to rig up a bracket a certain way or something but it'd be better if I had some three by five inch speakers the problem I'm running into there is I can't find any that have a decent wattage there's you can buy some that are five watts but they're you know they're that's just gonna sound weak as you know Sega games have good sound this one's more like 40 watts which would sound fine um, so it's hard to find a 3x5. I can't find any locally. I've searched all over the place uh, on the internet, though. Um, but I can't find where anybody locals got them. And the few that I've found that I can order that are 3x5 have little tiny magnets on them that, because it's 5 watts. So we're still trying to decide that. So we'll see what we can do. But for now, I'm just going to temporarily put this in there, just laying in there. And we'll see if when we turn it on, we now have sound. So I wired up the new speaker and still don't get any sound so we got bad speakers uh, and we've got some kind of wiring problem or board problem the the speaker in the seat uh, is a subwoofer and it is still good but i couldn't hear it so this is the uh, subwoofer amp and then this is like a an equalizer and basically sends the output on the top here out to the two speakers by the, uh, the mid-range ones by the monitor. Um, so I got to figure out what's going on. The, the sound comes from the main PCB board into this plug. This plug sends out the um, the sound to the bass amp through this plug, and then through this plug, it sends uh, sound over to here, and this speaker amplifies it. I mean, uh, this board sends it out to the mid-range so I'm gonna look it over and see if we've got any issues as you can see there's filth all over this one so I got to clean it up anyway so we can even see what we're looking at this one's in much better shape so I'll clean them off a little bit and see if I find anything interesting okay so it's hard to tell but this is actually this whole thing is vibrating it's basically a uh, shaker and you can turn it down. So it's kind of... It's doing its thing. Which would explain why there's no speaker grill. It's just a rumbler. So I put the, I put the bass amp back in and plugged this in just to see after I cleaned it up a little bit. And we're rumbling like we should. So, um, 
So our problem is going to be on the other board for why the speakers aren't working. Okay, so I couldn't find anything on either one of those boards that looked wrong at all. And when I put the one back in, I'm getting a rumbling out of the uh, seat, but no sound. But I don't think maybe that it's supposed to make sound because uh, there's no speaker grill. So I think what that is is there's just a shaker motor in there, and it's kind of shaking. Okay, so inside the control panel, there is this board. This is the volume. Oh, yeah, it says shaker right there. Well, now I know. <laughs> right? So you see I've got it turned all the way up and the volume I was turning all the way up and everything. Um, if I put my hand on the speaker that I've got rigged up in there for the top two, if I put my hand on the speaker I can feel it moving a little bit, but I can't hear any sound out of it. Okay, so that's this volume knob right here. Okay, if you look very carefully it says B5K on the back of those. So what that's telling you is the the resistance of the pot. So a potentiometer, a pot, the way it works is from the from one side of the pot to the other side is the value. So it should be 5k. See how we're a little high is 5.47k. That means between this line, which is this end of the pot, and there's like a horseshoe track in there, to this side of the pot is 5.47k resistance ohms of resistance right so this middle one is attached to a wiper that can be moved to anywhere on that pot and so the whole purpose of these is for you to it's a resistor that you can change so you can go if you've got it all the way down here like turned one way there's no resistance between the middle and that end because you've got it turned all the way to that end of the track and then if you go all the way, or I think I've got it backwards, but if you go all the way the other way, now there's no resistance between the middle and that pin of the track. And if you go in the middle, it should be about half. So from this wire to the middle, or this wire to the middle, you should never have more than 5K ohms of resistance. Because it, it, if it's touching this wire, if you check the resistance between this one and this one, it should be the same as between this one and this one. It should never go above 5K. So I'll, sh I'll show you on a brand new one. So this is a brand new 5K pot. Okay. So if we turn it all the way to one side, and then, well, we'll check the, uh, we'll check the two outside ones first. So the resistance from the outside is 5.04K. Okay, so I've got it turned all the way to this side. So the resistance between this one and the middle one is 0.2 ohms. And my, my meter is a little off, so that's, in other words, it's a dead short because it's turned all the way to one side. So that means that the resistance between the middle one and the other one is 5k ohms. It can't be above 5k because that track in there is there's only 5k resistance on the whole track. So if you turn it to about the middle and check it, now between the middle one and the left one, instead of 0 ohms, you've got 2500 ohms or 2.5k ohms. And then if you check between the middle one and the other one, you've got 2.45k ohms. So you see what I'm saying? So it always adds up to 5. So no matter where you put it, and if we go a little farther, now we've got 600 ohms one way, and then 4.4K ohms the other way. It always adds up to 5K. That's just how they work. It's a variable resistor. So on this one, when I'm getting between the two outside pins, 5.4K, what should I get between the middle and this left one? Well, no matter where I've got it set, it should be somewhere less than 5.4K, right? And it is... Ooh, if I can get it to read anything. Climbing somehow. <laughs> Maybe it's turning this knob, I don't know. Let's see, let's turn it all the way down. Check between the left one and the middle one. 
We've got 10K, it said. Now we're down to 7K. So that would be... Okay, so imagine you turn the knob all the way down. Well, what you really just did was you made the resistor that's on the lines 5K. Right? So if the, resist if the knob is all the way down and the resistance is 5K, it's dead quiet. So I just checked it in the resistance 10K. So there's even more resistance on the line. So it's quieter than quiet. Right? So if we go the other way, let's see what the resistance is this way. Between those two it is 13K or something like that. So in other words, this pot is schlonged, right? So it, it it's not even, if it was stuck at like 1K or something, it would just be stuck at a, at a certain volume. But since it's stuck at a number higher than 5K, because what's what's really going on is that the little wiper in there, it's not even touching the track right, or maybe the track's broken half or something, who knows. But it's all screwed up inside, basically. And so because it's a higher than 5K, it's quieter than quiet. 5K would be quiet. So it very well could be. Now, the speaker was bad. You saw us check the speaker, uh, both of them, both sides. But it very well could be that both speakers are bad and both of the potentiometers are bad, but the boards in the game are fine. So we'll see. Now these do look kind of screwed up. If you look, I mean, they're not that great. If you look in there, you can see the little track on that left one that we were just messing with. See the track? See the little thing in there where it's touching the, the plate on one end? Watch when I turn it. Let me stand up so I can see it too. You can see it inside there. Watch when I turn it. See it's turning it away? See it? Check that out. So in other words, my professional opinion is the pot screwed up. So we're going, to, we're going to replace that. Will that bring us our sound back finally? I don't know, but I'm going to replace both of these pots because this one, by the way, is just as bad. I don't know how the shaker's working at all, but it is what it is. Um, so I'm going to replace both of those pots with new ones, and then we'll put it back in and see if we get any sound. All right, so that got our sound back. It sounds like crap. But I, that's just because I've got that wrong speaker in there. And it's not mounted to anything. But we've got our sound back. Um, I think I may take that board, though, that, that one that does the two main speakers, and recap it just uh, in case any of that bad sound has anything to do with the caps on the, on the board. So yeah, it sounds god awful. But remember, it's the wrong ohm speaker, and um, it's not actually attached to anything. So, but we'll cap it just to make sure. So I put the thing back in. The best I can get out of the soundboard is I can get one speaker to work, uh, but it, it doesn't sound very good. And then the so neither of the speakers in the cabinet are working. And then I can wire in another speaker, and I can get the 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 right channel to work. Uh, but it sounds like crap. So I think what happened was the the little and the uh, the audio amp on the on the uh, heat sink gets really hot, red hot, and the other one doesn't. So I think what happened was both of the audio amps went bad and fried both of the speakers. I think. So it's kind of a weird situation because you have this little setup that makes the sound go around the monitor. It's a 3x5 speaker, so this is the one out of it, and this is one I ordered to replace it. It's the same size, and the magnet is the same size, but I don't know if they're the same wattage or anything. They look real similar. The only real difference is this one has a bigger, the smaller cone is bigger. So I don't know. But we're going to try to wire it up and put it back in, but the... the um, I ordered new chips for the audio amp to replace both sides. I recapped it and that didn't fix anything. So we'll see when they get in, but I'll put these new two new speakers in and see how that works. All right, so the bottom's fairly solid. It's just the trim pieces where they've got these uh uh these uh 
feet mounted are all screwed up and the feet are missing. So we'll have to see what we can do about that. But the, the actual bottom of the cabinet's solid. I guess that's why it hasn't actually tipped over yet. So it's supposed to be, according to the manual, whenever you roll it to wherever you put it, the uh, you want the legs to lift it up off of the wheels about a quarter inch. So we're putting two of the original style on the back, and then we've got two uh, new ones that are big heavy duty ones too, but they've got a slightly different thread pitch we're going to put on the front. We're going to have to replace these two front boards, uh, which is what the seat bolts to. The seat's all screwed up, but the this plate on the front of the seat slides in the front of the cabinet above this metal bracket here and that holds the front of the seat up and then the back of the seat is held up by two little leg levelers that are busted all the crap too so that's next but uh, the bottom of it's actually solid it's just this trim around it is screwed up uh, but that wasn't really supporting any weight and all of the legs were missing. So once we get all the legs on nice and sturdy, it should be nice and solid. Yeah, we're doing it up real big around here. Okay, so we've got it all solid. We've got the four legs on it. We put a couple replacement pieces on it with some supports behind it. Uh, so we can stand it back up again and see if it's more solid. And then we can work on the cosmetics of the front of it looking better. cleaned it up a little bit we've got it on its legs now it's nice and sturdy uh, but the whole design of the thing with these handlebars is a little worrisome because you know we're right here in our showroom <laughs> so we don't want kids coming in and pulling on it I don't believe it'll fall over anymore or anything but just in case we still put a couple uh, little blocks under it until we get the seat on it so uh, We've got the structural stuff done, so now we just need to start all the cosmetic stuff and get it all looking better. Um, as for the seat, it's filthy, but it's not really all that damaged. It is damaged on the plastic here, but the, uh, the actual seat itself is all in solid shape. We've got a little lip bent there that we can bend back. One of the pipes is ripped off of it, but it just screws back on, or bolts back on, so uh, that just all needs to be cleaned up. So that's next. Fixing the seat, it had some serious uh, leg problems. How long do you think has went between the last part of our video and this part of the video, Joe? Several months. Several months have passed, but here we are. Joey got the bright idea today. We're going to finish the Harley. So what was the big hold up, Joe? I just didn't feel like it. He wasn't into it. <laughs> He's trying to clean up around here, though. He wants to get it up and running and doing its thing. All right. Well, we're getting there. All right, so the feet are good. Now we got to mess with the side and put the, uh, put the exhaust pipe back on it. We had no luck finding a replacement seat, so I guess that's just going to have to be how it is. Boy, it's coming along great. I don't think you can Brillo pad rust off, Joe. Some of it. Some of it will come on. The black spray paint that somebody put on it will come on. You know these Harley people are picky. They're not going to be happy with the rust on them, uh, them <laughs> those tailpipes. They're going to put their custom exhaust on there. Oh, that's true. That's true. I didn't think about that. People, you know, we work with what we end up with. This is what we were presented with. It's not in perfect shape. But we're going to get it working again and looking as good as we can get it. Our, uh, this is our attempt to keep this game out of the uh, landfill. Since it was hella broke. 
Where'd we get this thing again, Joe? It's been so long, I forgot. That storage bin. Really? Yeah. With all that other stuff? Yeah. I thought we had it before that. Nope. Hmm. Joe has the memory. I don't ever remember where we got it. <laughs> Joe remembers... Uh, <laughs> B13. <laughs> Boy, it's a lot cleaner. Yeah, it is. Look at that. Oh, it's blinding my eyes. I can't even look. Wow. When we're putting this out there on the internet. You know, if we wouldn't have had to spend all the money on the electronics, we could have maybe had those re -chromed. <laughs> I got to leave something for the customer to do. That's right. This is the hairy hand. But oh no, it can't be the hairy hand because he always fixed that. So this is not the hairy hand technique. So some painter, was it Picasso? You don't probably know. Some painter used to paint portraits of people. And he always uh, he always left uh, he always left their hands screwed up where it looked like they had hair on their hand or something. And so the customers would come in and they'd say, oh, it's perfect, except for that hand. Ugh. Oh, it looks like he's got hair on his hand or something. And then he'd say, oh, well, I can fix that. And they'd say, okay, well, that'd be great. <laughs> and the only reason he put it on there is because the customers always complained about at least one thing. So he gave them something to complain about, make his job a little easier. Okay, so we about got it. About time to carry it over there and plug it into the machine. Okay, folks, so you, we, you may have seen us mention on other videos that this thing has taken us forever to fix. But we have finally got it done. Can you believe that? Oh, man. So the beginning of this, the, so the, the first repair video that we uploaded, we filmed last year sometime, but we hadn't finished the game. So I don't really like to upload repair videos until we've actually got it completely repaired so that I'm, you know, I'm sure that there's a beginning and an end, right? So this is the second video repair video. So we got about halfway through the second repair video and we finally figured out the sound and all of that, but we, uh, we still had some problems with the, uh, with like some of the cosmetics and things like that. So the thing has been sitting around for months, just waiting for us to kind of finish it up. And we finally decided the day to get on it and finish it. And in that interim, we have gotten a different camera. So this, this part of the video is a little bit higher resolution than the first part. So from time to time, you'll see us finishing up some little projects where the the uh, part of the video is old school but hey that's how we do it around here yeah. now I can't tell you how many videos we have that are half filmed that we haven't finished yet because that'd be giving away one of our trade secrets and you know we are definitely not gonna do that so but uh, so here's what we did to finish this thing up the seat we have looked and looked and looked and could not find a replacement seat so it's just gonna stay like that Yes, I know you could make one, but we're talking, first of all, you got to be pretty artistic to do it. It would take me hours of research to figure out the best way to do it. Uh, and then I'd probably screw this one up and it just, it's not worth the trouble. So uh, that one's just going to stay like that. If the customer wants to do it themselves, more power to them, right? We had the front of the cabinet down there was all screwed up. You saw earlier in the video where we replaced that. And then we that bracket underneath the cabinet, the seat slides into, and all of that went along great. We replaced the old T-molding with new orange T-molding that gives it a nice, clean, bright look. Right? So it's came out pretty good. Now, in most of this video, we were messing with the sound. So whenever we replace both of those speakers... Um, and I, I think what we ended up doing was we had to buy another soundboard, the, the smaller one. I got some of the sound amps and replaced them, but that still didn't fix the problem. So there was 
one of the sound amps would get very hot and uh, was just all distorted, and the other sound amp, that side of the board, would not work at all. So we bought a tested working soundboard. Uh, they're on eBay. I think it was about sixty dollars, but it's used. Put it in, and the sound works fine. So uh, that worked out good. We got our little hose fixed up here. We cleaned it up as best we could. Uh, oh, the buttons. The two little square buttons on it that were on it are really hard to find, both Sega ones, and they're very expensive, right? And to me, just not worth the trouble of tracking those down on a game like this that's kind of beat up, you know? So you see the brackets and stuff on the side. You saw how the whole front on the bottom was ripped off. We had to replace. Somebody has replaced the front uh, where the coin door mounts with a piece of plywood. Um, so the operator, somebody must have beat the crap out of this thing back in the day. So am I going to am I going to spend fifty, sixty dollars on the right button? And I think the lens was missing off the other one. I can't remember, but am I going to spend that kind of money on the button on a game this beat up? Uh, oh no, I'm not. I'm just going to put a regular button in it. So it's a little cheapo button. Works great. Uh, you just press it, and it's it's just a switch. So it doesn't really need to be anything special. Now, if this was a really nice, super clean one where everything was still in great shape, yeah, I'd, I'd probably spend the money and get the perfect button for it so that the thing's all original. But this one is a little bit of a of a uh, rat rod. So, like we usually do, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to film a separate video of us playing it, but what I thought I would do for this one, since we talked so much about the sound, was that I would go through the sound test with you. Right? So, let me have a seat here, and we will enjoy some of the wonderful, wonderful tunes here. If I can get down to the test switch. Oh man, I hit the wrong button, man. We did a video like this on our Daytona and our Daytona 2. Sega had great sound on all their games, so we'll go through a little bit of it. Some of these are just uh, like uh, noises for the for the bike. That pot still has a little bit of scratchiness. Let me see if I can. Let me see if the button on the. Uh, So I gotta hit that one each time. Okay, so that's number one. Number two is a bike. Bike. Turn it up a little bit.
nice little hit there. The seat vibrates too, so like the bass is in the seat as well, it's really cool. And I don't know how it comes across on the video, but it's all in full stereo, you know, so you can hear instruments on the right and the left. Broke something. Select your favorite Harley Davidson. Turn the handlebar and twist the grip. Fat Boy, Panhead, Dyna Wide Glide, Sportster, Police Motorcycle, Automatic Transmission, Manual Transmission. Thank you. Ready? Go! Time extended. Time is up. Game over. Please enter your name. Try again. Don't worry! You did it! You made it! Yeah! Well done! Take it easy! Good job! Awesome! Great! Amazing! Beautiful! Perfect! Excellent! Incredible! Dynamite! Cool! Cool it! Out! No! Yeah! Huh? Oh! Alright! Bingo! Aha! Uh -huh.
Santa Monica, LAX, downtown, Hollywood, Beverly Hills, Hollywood Freeway, Santa Monica Freeway, San Diego Freeway, Century Freeway, Glen M. Anderson Freeway, Harbor Freeway, Santa Monica Boulevard, Sunset Boulevard, Lincoln Boulevard. Ouch! No! Yeah! Okay. Oh! Oh! Hmm. All right! Bingo! Aha! All right. All right. So, very cool. Very cool. Very cool. There you have it, folks. Coming along very well. So I'm going to film another full video of us playing it and all that stuff. Now that we've got it up and running. I hope you enjoyed the video. Leave your comments below. It was a long time coming, but we finally got it up and doing its thing. Now, by the time you see this video, we may have already sold this game. <laughs> these, some of these cool ones like this don't really last very long. Uh, but you can see if we've still got it or another one that you might be interested in by going to our website. Go to lionsarcade.com. Check it out. It's always up to date. Even if you're watching this video 10 years down the road, it's still up to date. Now, if you want, you can come by and see us. We're in downtown Rock Hill, South Carolina. And we've got a uh, building full of arcade games that we're always working on and selling and all of that. Some pinballs, some jukeboxes. So stop by and see us if you would like. Now, if you can't come by and you, uh, you, because you're nowhere near here, and you don't want to buy a game because you're nowhere near here, that's just fine. Subscribe to us here on YouTube, and every time we get one of these suckers in, we will film a little video of it. If you go look at all of our past videos, you can see we've done a ton of them. It looks blue right now, but that's not how it looks in real life. There we go. That's more like how it looks in real life. Color balance. Probably because I'm showing the orange marquee. There we go. <laughs> So leave your comments below, let us know what you think about it, and make sure to give us a thumbs up for filming it for you. The thumbs up helps YouTube pass this stuff around a little bit so everybody sees it. And they say, hey, people are thumbing it up. It must be cool. That's what they usually say. So leave your comments below. What, click our Amazon link. We've got a link to Amazon down below. If you go to that link or if you bookmark it or something like that, anytime you buy something on Amazon, if you go to that link first, it is as if we sent you there and Amazon pays us a little royalty for it. So a lot of people have been doing that and we really appreciate it. So thank you out there to everybody who has done that. Thank you, thank you, thank you. That doesn't raise your prices or anything. It just uh, tell it puts a little, it puts our URL, our name in your URL for whatever you buy and basically it gives us a little tip <laughs> because we are advertising in this video, which is what I'm doing right now, sent you there. So we appreciate that, everybody that's done it. Everybody's been buying some really cool stuff that's kind of funny. Some people buy food and clothes and stuff like that. And the other day, in the middle of the big virus shutdown, somebody bought a whole bunch of toilet paper. So I don't know if that was like a legitimate buy or if they were just making fun of us or something. I don't know. It could have been they were mocking us. And then I had a gentleman email Bob <laughs> and say that if, uh, if he was going to... Um, uh, buy something to mock us. He would buy us uh, Logic a Pro, or, or what did he say? A uh, tripod that's easy to set up <laughs> and uh, uh, multimeter probes that clip on. That's a good one. And there was something else too. But anyway, so um, check out the lights at the top. Man, this game is so cool and I own it right now until somebody buys it. Wow! I'm going to keep the door locked so they can't come in and get it. But, uh, yeah, so we appreciate all the Amazon people. Thank you very much. We appreciate all of the people watching from all over the place. I just had somebody leave me a comment earlier saying that he is from Stockholm, Sweden, watching our videos. We appreciate that over there in Sweden. And uh, people, of course, from all over the United States. But we get a lot of people from, uh, from all over the world watching us. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Leave your comments below. We try to respond to all of them, uh, especially if you're nice. Now, if you're a jerk... You know, we're kind of rednecks around here, so I mean, we respond in kind to jerks. <laughs> uh, 
So you can choose your uh, choose your fate below. So uh, we try to respond to all the comments. Thanks everybody for watching. Hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you on the next video.